people look at uh, the channels that maybe have a million subscribers and they think, well, if I don't have a million subscribers, I can't make a living. Talon and I do this. We do this full time. We have three children. We run our business full time. This is all we do. And we're making a good living with this business. And so I don't want you all to underestimate um, just because maybe you have a few thousand subscribers or a few thousand views that you can't make real money. You can. Imagine you're weeks away from getting married, but you haven't let your fiance in on one little detail. You're $30,000 in credit card debt. Awkward. How does that start to a marriage end up with the couple running a hugely successful financial education business and YouTube channel? all while being completely debt free. Let's meet the creators behind his and her money. Hey, Ty and Talit, not to focus right in on the rocky beginning, but it's an important part of your story. Can you tell us how you got in and out of a $30,000 hole? Yeah, the mess started on this side of the marriage because I grew up in a two parent household, middle class, you know, cheering me on, encouraging me to do my best. But uh, they were uh, frugal, I think is the politically correct way to say cheap. And so when my friends were coming to school with the brand new Michael Jordan shoes, I was coming to school with the brand new Pro Wings. Now, I know many people don't know what a Pro Wing is, but that is the pay less shoe store version of the Jordan. So the jump man was a little awkward. It wasn't quite moving in the same direction. And so I was coming to school with stuff like that. I didn't get anything name brand. And when I graduated high school, I immediately went into the military and I had my own money for the first time. I was thousands of miles away from home. And I told myself, I'm going to do exactly what my parents didn't do. And so because they didn't buy me anything name brand, I bought everything name brand and my spending was just out of control. I didn't know what I was doing with money. I just knew I had money and I wanted to spend it and get nice things. And so um, because I didn't have the understanding of how money works and how to be a good steward over it, I blew it and ended up in a bunch of debt, over $30,000 worth of debt and um, had nothing to show for it. Tal and I were high school sweethearts. So we met in high school. And he went after high school, he went off into to be in the army. And I thought that his finances, I thought that he was a rock star because here it is. He's making good money from the government um, and he doesn't have to send his money anywhere, uh, but literally just spend it on himself and, and also save for the future. And so prior to getting married in premarital counseling, I found out that he lied to me about how much debt he really was in. And yeah. that's really how it came out. I was afraid because she was completely debt free. She had put herself through college debt free. She had a degree in finance and was working in one of the largest financial institutions in the world. And here I was with a pocket full of debt saying, will you marry me? And so I tried to create this plan where I would get rid of the debt before we walked down the aisle, but it didn't work. My lie was exposed. I had to tell the truth and we almost didn't get married. Not so much because of the money, but because I was dishonest. And so we had to do a whole lot of praying, a whole lot of talking. And thankfully, 15 years later, here we are, husband and wife. And because we got on the same page, because we came clean and really put everything out on the table, we were able to get out of that debt in the first year of our marriage. And then a few years later, we got really radical in the home that we live in right now. We decided that we weren't going to wait 30 years to pay it off. We were going to do it in five. And so five years from the day that we closed on the house, we walked into the bank and made our very last mortgage payment. And now we are a completely debt free family trying to help other people do the same thing. I do feel like there's this phase that so many young people go through, uh, including myself, which is uh, learning the hard way about credit card debt. I got up to seven thousand dollars when I was 24 and um, suddenly realized, oh, I, I actually do need to pay for this stuff. Would I have avoided that if your channel was around back then? I mean, what do you teach exactly on the channel? Yes, if our channel was around back then, I do believe that uh, we would have been able to help you uh, because one of the things that we teach is um, you don't have to necessarily compromise. Like we still do the vacations. We still buy the things that we still love. Like Tyler is still a spender. That didn't change. We just make sure that we have the money for it. And we make sure that we don't do it at the expense of not having um, our kids' college already set up, having our own retirement accounts set up, um, also other wealth building strategies set up. And so we tell people that you don't have to stop doing the things that you love or buying the things that you love. You just need to make sure that you have a plan. And so our channel helps you do just that. Now, can you give us a broad strokes overview of your business around YouTube? You obviously have the channel. I, I saw some ads on your video, so you're making ad revenue. Are there courses or coaching or 
merch. I mean, what, what does the whole business look like, uh, all the revenue streams? Um, yes, we make money through ad revenue, but we also make money through sponsorships. That's simply where you partner with another company um, and you may, uh, it, you know, mention their name in your video, uh, maybe a coupon code or something like that in the description box. And you do have to disclose it properly that this is a sponsored video, but we do make money by way of sponsorship. But we also make money through our own products. And we do that by pushing that through YouTube, um, by either mentioning it in a video. So we have a monthly uh, membership community. We have books. Um, we have courses. Um, at one point, we also had uh, merchandise like mm -hmm. T-shirts and things like that as well, too. So we're always thinking of ways of how we can grow the business and how we can get the message out there. We do that through YouTube. New creators to the education space on YouTube, I think, struggle to have the confidence to say, now I'm going to go from being the student to being the teacher. And I, I know from researching you all that you started on YouTube watching financial education videos uh, and then decided to start making your own. How do you recommend that creators build the confidence to make that leap? I mean, how do they know when they're expert enough to be the creator? You have a story. So that makes you an expert at something because we're all on a journey, but you may be a mile ahead of me. And that's all that you need. I need to know how you got up there because I'm back here. Uh, I used to be a teacher, a classroom teacher. And one of the things that older teachers would tell you, especially like if you're teaching a new subject uh, from one year to the next, they say, you just got to stay one chapter ahead of the students. You got to study one chapter ahead of the students and you'll be fine. Um, you've been through something, you've learned something. And so YouTube is a great place to showcase yourself because you can be real, you can be authentic. Like we said earlier, we don't just tell what we got right. We also tell what we got wrong and the lessons that you can learn from both. And you find that a lot of people want to go on the journey with you. They don't want to be talked down to. They don't want to see just people on the mountaintop and they're in the valley low. They Again, they want to see people who may be just a little bit ahead of them, who can they can identify with. You know what? They look like me. Their story is similar to mine. Their background is similar to mine. I can identify with this person. Let me keep following them. Maybe I can learn and grow and maybe I can avoid some of the pitfalls that they fell into because you're willing to tell your story. No matter where you're at in the journey, you have something that will help somebody that's behind you. What about when starting a new channel with all this enthusiasm and energy, you've decided to do it. It can be pretty discouraging to see your first video only get views from you hitting refresh or sending it to your parents and family members. What do you recommend for someone starting a new channel and trying to do what I call budging the boulder? to give it momentum. So one of the things we can only share really um, our personal experience. Um, we didn't set our expectations high whatsoever. We did not know that his or her money was going to grow into the brand that it has been today, um, simply because all we wanted to do was serve. And so if you keep that in the forefront, that even if one person finds your video and they learn something and it changes their life, then you did your job. Um, we received a email uh, one time from someone saying that, um, she found our video and at just the right time, I think we went live, um, on a video just the right time. And she was contemplating, contemplating suicide. Like literally this is life or death, like hope and hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, wow, if we would have waited, um, simply because maybe we weren't getting the 1000 or 2000 or 3000 views, then maybe she would not have been reached. So think about the people that really need you the most. And so don't set your expectations too high, especially when starting a channel. I mean, be realistic. It's going to take some time um, for you to literally grow your channel over time uh, and use this as an opportunity to be able to get your message out in a pure way, like a pure way. One of the things that we told ourselves, we didn't want to buy followers. We didn't want followers to feel pressured into following us. We wanted a, our true tribe. And so by doing that over time, just by giving service over and over and value over and over, our tribe started to grow. Our tribe started to talk about us. Our tribe started to share our videos and also follow us and purchase our products. Yeah. And I think that you also got to understand how powerful YouTube is. Like today, I saw a comment from a video we did three or four years ago about uh, conflict in marriage and how to avoid it or how to deal with it. And somebody said that this is an on time video. Now on time, but we recorded it three or four years ago, but it was on time today. And so you have to have that long-term perspective in mind. You might have 10 views today, but you don't know. You could really help somebody 
two years from now, five years from now, from what you did today. So put your your best foot forward. That was our mentality. That wasn't a cliche what Ty just said. Like that was literally our mentality. If 10 people watch this video, we're going to give those 10 people everything that we have to offer. And you don't know who's watching. I mean, you don't know. It could be the one person that can literally change the trajectory of your entire company, your entire business. And you don't know who's watching. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube. Everybody is watching it, right? No matter their economic status, no matter their race, right? No matter their beliefs, no matter what group they belong in. Like people, they watch videos and somebody can resonate with your message. And it can literally be that one person that can change your life. One of the reasons we're doing this whole series is to try to put a spotlight on all of the amazing small businesses and medium businesses around YouTube channels because you hear about the big superstars on YouTube, but you often don't hear about these amazing small businesses that people are building uh, like yourselves. For those watching who have a small business and are thinking about YouTube, what's your one piece of advice, like practical advice on getting started? When I tell you, we tell everybody, if they even approach us, if we're at church, they're like, I'm thinking about this idea. I'm thinking about starting a business. We're like, make sure you also start your YouTube channel. Um, YouTube, again, for us, has been such a vital part of our business. And I'm so happy that you all are doing these spotlights because you're right. I think uh, people look at uh, the channels that maybe have a million subscribers and they think, well, if I don't have a million subscribers, I can't make a living. Talon and I do this. We do this full time. We have three children. We run our business full time. This is all we do. And we're making a good living with this business. And so I don't want you all to underestimate um, just because maybe you have a few thousand subscribers or a few thousand views that you can't make real money. You can. Um, one of the things that we live by is just make sure that you move in excellence. Excellence does not mean perfection. I think so many times the reason why a lot of people don't hit start on their YouTube channel is because they, they feel like I need to have it just right. No, excellence means, okay, I'm gonna give it my best with what I have. If that means my, my cell phone, the camera on my cell phone, if that means borrowing a camera from someone, I'm still gonna move in excellence, but I'm not going to allow perfection to stop me from moving. Absolutely, and I think that you gotta have a long-term view. You have to be willing to do video after video after video, because number one, when your first video, you're not going to be at your best. You need the reps yourself just to get comfortable in front of the camera, yeah. to find your voice, to find your personality for YouTube. And so don't give up at video 10 and say, man, I'm not getting this and just forget it. I'll just go back to what I was doing. Have a long range view. Just keep making content. You're helping somebody. And if you stay consistent, you will reap the benefits. That's one of the core things that was key for us. We showed up every single week, multiple times a week, and we kept bringing value. So bring value on a consistent basis with a long-term view. You'll be all right. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. Make sure you go visit His and Her Money and subscribe. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank, Thank you. you so we much too. for having us. A lot of fun.